Personally, I will now try to summarize this again. I think it's important. I'll try to keep it as short as possible, because many people tell me, Roger, I haven't understood it yet. Or there are people who are watching and are perhaps new to it. I'll try to summarize it briefly and concisely for you. Rainer Füllmich was charged with embezzlement. So, point one, the complaint was filed on September 2, 2022. The contract, for example, the sale of his property, was on October 3, 2022. It was even a public holiday, if I remember correctly. And you can ask yourself the first question. Although nothing criminal has actually happened yet, the criminal complaint has already been filed. So that's the first question I can really ask myself. How can that be? But that's another topic. So it's about a value store that Rainer Füllmich took out of the Corona donations with the loan agreement, because both Viviane Fischer and Rainer Füllmich were also afraid of censorship. For example, freezing of the accounts, because one or the other account in the resistance was frozen or was cancelled or blocked. And that's why they decided that Viviane Fischer would take 100,000 euros and Rainer Füllmich 700,000 as a loan from the donations. So clear so far? Then there was a loan, so like an advance, from the class action. Has nothing to do with the Corona Committee. It's a separate thing. Rainer Füllmich no longer had an account. For this reason, he asked Marcel Templin at the time whether he could accept the mandates on his behalf and of course also provide the account where the mandate can deposit the amount, which I think was 800 euros. So I think everything is fine so far. It was by proxy. I think that was 22 at the beginning where it was processed. Then there was a data leak. I think someone made a mistake and wrote to the clients, not blind copy, but CC. Everyone was then seen, which was of course not good at all. Rainer didn't like that and said, I've had enough and I'm taking the clients back to me. He wrote to everyone and I think almost 100% of them switched to Rainer Füllmich. That was in summer 22. That means in summer 22 all the mandates are with Rainer Füllmich. I would now assume that it is clear that the corresponding funds associated with the mandate also go to Rainer Füllmich. And this loan of these 600,000 where Rainer Füllmich had a contract with Templin is of course no longer valid. So I think we all agree that this is no longer possible. Even Marcel Templin, there is a credible email correspondence, a document, where he said that it had been terminated and settled. That means, again, all mandates were with Rainer Füllmich and therefore also the money, for example, the claim to the money. Can you follow me until then? Is it clear by then? It would be important to me that everyone understands, because I know it's not easy. Please give me some feedback on whether you have understood it by then, or if you have any questions. Is that clear? Right. Gunnar Ratzfa says, yes, good. I'll wait. Yes. Yes, okay. Good. Okay, good. Then it goes on. The house sale, the first contract, was August 28th in 2022. The second contract was signed in September. I don't have the exact date. It was signed in September 22. Those were the two properties. That was this total amount, I think. Please, I'm not quite sure anymore. This 1.3 million and a few crumbs. The contract is ready. At the time it was concluded, on October 3rd, 2022, the land register was clean enough that it wasn't encumbered. It hadn't been deleted yet, but it wasn't encumbered in that sense. All good. 
In other words, the payment could have been made. The buyers pay the money to the notary, and the notary sends the money, which would have gone to Inka's account. That was the deal. So that was the deal. Now, on November 18th, there's an entry in the land register from Marcel Templin, where suddenly this 600,000 loan from a year and a half ago, where he had no claim at all, is entered in the land register. And that's not all. Now it goes even further. Templin says, oh, I think I have a little more claim. Yes, there's interest and a little more processing. More interest and more processing. And in the end, he comes up with a sum of 1.1 million. The notary did not inform Rainer Füllmich about the 1.1 million and transferred this sum to Templin. Once again, the notary did not inform Rainer Füllmich and transferred the sum to Marcel Templin. At this point, it was clear that Rainer would of course not be able to repay the 700,000 he had taken out as a store of value. But that was always his plan. He always said that. He said that to me on the show on 21. He kept saying that, and there's very clear evidence. He clearly wanted me to sell the house, and I remember that very well, and then I'd repatriate the money. So this is actually an important point that you need to understand. Rainer couldn't pay back the money. He was accused of embezzlement, but he didn't have the money on his account. So I don't know about that, but the notary gave the instruction. Is that clear so far? Can you understand that Templin did not have the right to make this entry in the land register, plus to demand almost double the amount afterwards, even though all the mandates and the corresponding funds were with Rainer Füllmich? So now I'll ask again, please be lenient with me because it's important to me. Is this process that I now have said clear and understandable? Because it's important to me, because there are a lot of rumors and a lot of people don't understand it. Why on Inka's account? I'm not 100% sure, but I could imagine that Rainer probably didn't have many accounts and that's why it probably went to the Inka account. But that's just an assumption. Then, and I would like to say this again, Viviane Fischer said, we have no more money, we are very poor, we only have 1000 euros left. Yes, then she made another appeal for donations. Please, please help us. But she didn't say that the Corona Ausschuss still has about a million euros in gold. And for me, that's pretty liquid. She had the opportunity with Rainer Füllmich. On October the 10th, there was an email where Degussa, the gold was then stored in Berlin, said it was okay, money laundering okay, you can liquidate the money. Viviane Fischer's answer, no, I don't want that, because it's going to Rainer Füllmich's trust account, and I don't trust him. That's my interpretation. Of course, she said it quite differently. She says, yes, I'll still trust the person, but not the cause. She said something like that. So, Viviane Fischer, I'm sure she's listening. I just have to say that you made a huge mistake. What should Rainer Füllmich have done with the money? Run off? Well, the gold would have been sold, would have gone into the account, because when you buy gold, the buyer and the seller are in the same account. That's apparently because of money laundering and so on. If they had done this thing, they could have sold 100,000 to get them through this period, whatever. Then Rainer would have immediately transferred it to the Corona Committee and the matter would have been settled. Now you can ask the question, who is the problem? Then there are various other things you need to know. She said the gold has to go back to the first company, where the four partners are Justus Hoffmann, Viviane Fischer, Antonia Fischer and Rainer Füllmich. But what has happened in the meantime? 
Rainer Füllmich was kicked out. Viviane Fischer is no longer managing director. Antonia Fischer and Justus Hoffmann are now managing directors of the first company. Okay, good so far. And that's where she wants the money to go? The 700,000 plus the gold? Even though Viviane Fischer no longer has any power or control? And now I have to see if I can find the print screen. How interested Justus Hoffmann is. Let's see if I can find it quickly. I think I've prepared it. So this is the chat history. Of course I saved it back then. Here is the chat history with Justus Hoffmann and Viviane Fischer. Viviane Fischer writes, I can see that. What are you feverishly doing right now? Justus Hoffmann, that was the answer of, I see it differently. That's also a very big image problem. Because he says, I'm quite relaxed about that. I couldn't care less what the resistance movement think of me. Now, dear Viviane Fischer, if someone says to me, I don't give a shit about the resistance. Does it make sense to return the money to this company where you have nothing more to say and the other two are company people who are apparently only after the money? And Rainer Füllmich didn't want that, wanted to protect the money and wanted to stand up for the donors so that it would be used properly and not for those people who are apparently greedy for money. So I think we are in agreement. Legally speaking, Rainer should have been released yesterday. Rainer only ever wanted to protect the money. Rainer was committed. Rainer conducted the interviews and it was important to Rainer that the investigation continued. There is still a lot to be cleared up. I still have a few things up my sleeve, where I can also show how often and how, yes, you could say, Viviane Fischer lied. And I will also show and prove that. The biggest lie was on September 2nd, dear Viviane Fischer, when you said, I'm sorry, we can't carry out the Corona Committee because Corwin, who works with us, his wife is in the final stages of pregnancy and is expecting a child. I can prove that. Someone was listening to this phone call. Nevertheless, you carried out the committee without Rainer Füllmich, who was 50% authorized to be there. That was the beginning of the end. You, Viviane Fischer, destroyed the Corona Committee. And I stand by that. Rainer told you various things in August. Let's find a solution. And that's all documented. Now you can ask yourself the question. Exactly. And perhaps a word about these 30,000, who always say it's not 30,000, but 25,000 net. Viviane Fischer also decided on similar amounts. They trusted each other. It wasn't an issue. And if someone then claims, as a business economist, that she had no knowledge of this for one and a half years, then I have big question marks. I have received many emails from people who said they had not received an answer from the Corona Committee. But when they wrote to a law firm, they were answered very quickly and in a very friendly manner. You know, it's quite complex. And I've done a lot of research in the meantime. I've had a lot of conversations, of course, also thanks to Katja Wermer, who showed me the facts so that I simply understood what was going on. Absolutely. The Corona Committee was overwhelmed. They didn't expect, A, to be active for so long, but also, B, that they would be so successful, that people would support the Corona Committee so much. Economists, not business economists, sorry. And Rainer just wanted the truth on the table and he just went full throttle. And while we're on the subject of that 100,000, Viviane Fischer, since you are so super liquid, it took you two months to pay it back. So I don't think that's so liquid.
by the way. But the second part of your book, where Rainer Füllmich was also mentioned, where it was marketed, where Rainer said clearly to me, I don't want to have anything to do with this book, which is also proven, which you didn't admit. It will also be analyzed. The great book you wrote, Rainer, the second part. Okay, I just wanted to summarize it again for everyone who hasn't understood it yet. I think it was important that there isn't always this rumor mill. Here and there and everywhere. Because that doesn't help, Rainer. It doesn't help the truth. I hope that the last person has now understood how this went down and the big question is how could or what could have occurred to Templin in his head that he entered this in the land register. Why, if he was apparently so important to the Corona Committee, why didn't he transfer the money to the Corona Committee, for example? Yes, and a warm greeting also to Wolfgang Wodak. I am open to communication with Wolfgang Wodak. I have written him an email that I am allowed to say and I am eagerly waiting. So far he has not replied. I am and I was disappointed. And I still am with the way he attacked Rainer. Because in principle I think Wolfgang Wodak's work is good. But I didn't think his attack was good at the time and I would have liked to have offered him my point of view, as I see it. He hasn't contacted me yet. Perhaps he happens to be watching. I would like to talk to you internally and not publicly and exchange views. Maybe there will be another surprise. I personally won't give Viviane Fischer a platform. Definitely not until Rainer is free again. Because, I'm sorry Viviane Fischer, too much glass has been broken and there are some lies in there. And I don't want to give you a platform. I stand by that.